On today's show, we're going to be looking at these Yongyi Lens Turbo M42 to M43. That's M42 screw mount to M43 micro four thirds. And we're going to learn why this is better than this. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, all about photography and video and live streaming and all things related. Normally, usually, almost always at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. However, we are going to start doing something once every probably three weeks. We'll see how it goes. But every once in a while, I'm going to shift a show to a three o'clock time slot. So the next Wednesday's show, in fact, is going to be at three o'clock Pacific time, which means that we'll be able to hit a different time zone around the world. And I can't do that all the time, but uh, but that's going to be we're going to do it once every three weeks is what I've kind of put on the calendar for the next couple of months. And we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, maybe we'll end up doing more of them. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's an experiment. We're always experimenting around here. But for those who don't usually get to tune in live, on Wednesday, the whatever, Ryan, what, what'll, what's the date of next Wednesday? Uh, we will do a show at 3 p.m. Pacific, so hopefully helping out some of the people who don't normally get to watch live. And for those of you in the UK, it will be bedtime for you. So sorry, I know that you're like my most trusted regulars. Uh, and we're not helping you out there, but say levy. Sorry, guys. Um, the, re the upload will, of course, go up a little bit later in the day. Okay, so what are we talking about today? This is, I did a show on this a little while ago, linked here. This is an M42 to micro four thirds screw mount. This, as you can tell, has no glass in it. So what is M42? M42 is the screw mount that you find on vintage Russian lenses, um, uh, Zeiss lenses, like a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of these M42, and there's a couple different sizes. M42 is a pretty common one, screw mount size lens. And these are old vintage glass, quite often not very well made, quite often have not great optics. And um, quite often you find them with mold and scratches in them. And you might think, why would you want any of that? Character, because they have character. Lenses like this have character. They're unique, each one, especially once they've aged, each one is different. You find one that you like, you like the look of it, you like the lens flare, you like the, the off-color things that you get out of it, and you're going, ooh, oh, well, this is kind of cool, I kind of like this. So you, that's why you might want to get into these things, and they're cheap as dirt, cheap as chips, as my British friends would say. It is uh, the kind of things you can get these on eBay for, I've bought lenses for like $20. You often pay more for shipping than you do for the lens itself. And it's fun, right? It's a really fun way to get into a very inexpensive addition to your camera kit. These can be adapted to a lot of different things, but they really adapt well to micro four thirds because they're small lenses. They pair up nicely with the small sensors. So you have to adapt it though, right? So how do you go about doing that? Well, that's what the show is that we already pointed to. That's this adapter here, which is literally a spacer with the screw mount. So you just screw Mm -hmm. screw this into this end and then the other end is a micro four thirds mount and that's it put it under your camera and off you go you what you end up getting this spacer by the way is the exact spacing that it needs so you can achieve the closest focus the infinity focus as you're supposed to right that's what it's for um the problem with one without any glass in it is because these are micro four thirds sensors and they're actually designed for 35 millimeter film tiny cameras um you end up cropping into the lens. And so just like any other lens that you pick up and it says 25 millimeter on the case, that means that it's a 50 millimeter when you're shooting micro four thirds. So what you want if you want to get that, that width back is a speed booster. However, speed boosters are expensive, right? They're, they're quite spendy little buggers. So I had been avoiding them and then one of you lovely audience members told me that Xiongyi made one and I have other Zongyi products. One of my favorite lenses, the 25 millimeter f0.95 lens, we'll be sure to link to that down below, is a Zongyi lens, and it's fabulous. Um, inexpensive, very fast, very small, all manual, love it. Same company makes this speed booster. I don't think they call it a speed booster, but it's basically what it is. This has glass, so I can't stick my finger through this one. And what a speed booster essentially does is it is I, total, I don't really totally understand the optics on this, but it somehow it expands the field of view. It pulls in more light. You actually get a, it, you get an aperture advantage. You get more light coming. It's all weird, crazy, mad science. Um, this show's not about that. This show's about this thing, which is like a speed booster, except that it has no electronics. So you're not going to get any autofocus. Doesn't matter on this lens because it's not autofocus lens anyway. But you have a totally manual piece of glass here with uh, that allows you to connect your old vintage Russian lenses to it and maintain the majority, probably not the whole thing, but the majority of the original field of view, unlike this one. So that's kind of cool, right? So now, now we're getting somewhere. Now this is, I totally forgot to bring up the page for this. I can't show you how, what it, it, I'll put it in, I'll put a thing in the edited version of this. I totally forgot to bring up the B&H page for this, but it is 
I think I want to say it's under two hundred dollars for sure. I want to say close to like one twenty. Remember, um, B and H sent this over on loan. I ain't sending it back. I'm going to be purchasing this because it is super useful. And Ryan's telling me that it is already in the description, or maybe not. He's going to figure that out. Anyway, it'll be there. So let's take a look at it. That's the fun part of this. Let's take a look at how this looks compared to without it. Um, I've got our Betty model standing in here. I've got the G9 all in place, ready to go. We're going to put this on. We're going to start with the super cheap version of adapting it so without the glass so we can see the difference in here and away we go now the lens that i'm using here is the um the russian helios lens this is the one that is famous for having kind of a swirly bokeh oh and that was the other thing with this adapter because it's cropping in you don't really get the swirly bokeh you're going to get more of that with the metabones knockoff i don't um we're not going to see that here looking at this setup, but I'm going to show you some photos that I did with this setup in a moment for a commercial job, and you'll see uh, see how those came out. So let's uh, let's do this thing, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy and put it onto the camera. There we go. So you can see the field of view there. So there is our field of view. You can see, I realize that I don't have a great background in here, but here I am. See, I'm, I think you can kind of see me through there poking through, so you can see how out of focus I am back there. Um, the lens is wide open. I am an arm length and a half away from the subject at that point. So that's, that's the field of view you get without the adapter. Now, I'm going to take this guy off and unscrew this lens and replace that with the glass one there. There we go. Put this guy on and attach this to the camera. Oh, yeah, one little thing on here I wanted to show you. If we go into a close-up on this, notice there's no red dot. There actually is a red dot. It's like hidden there. Can you see it there? Like just barely, every time I go to put this thing on, I can't find it. I gotta remember, it's under the M42, M43 thing. Kind of important to know where that is when you go to attach the camera, but hey. All right, so there we go, that's on. And now, let's go back to that view. You can see we have a considerably wider field of view much more in tune with what the lens is supposed to be doing. Now, this is wide open. Let me double check this. I'm gonna actually look into the aperture. Yep, that is totally wide open right now. And so then let me go back there and give you a little bokeh test again so you can see. So here, I'm, gonna st I'm actually gonna stand arm length behind her so you can kind of see me poking through there. So you get really nice shallow depth of field out of this, right? You're getting a really nice bit of bokeh on there, which is pretty, pretty cool. Like, gotta like that. But if you stop it down a little bit, the lens character changes dramatically. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a light here. I'm going to force a little bit of flare because it's just the light's kind of too clean in here. I'm gonna force a little bit of flare onto the lens, wide open, and then I'm gonna stop it down just the tiniest bit. It's a stepless aperture. I'm gonna close it down just a tiny bit and you're gonna see that go away, which means, which is really awesome, which means if you want that characteristic flare, leave it wide open. But if, you're, if that flare is getting in your way, if it's buggy, you just stop it down the tiniest bit and it'll go away. So let's go back to the right view here. Uh, let's see here, I'm going to, I am wide open. I'm going to take this light and turn it on and let's find, there we go. So kind of out of frame in there a little bit. Get on the nice, I wonder if you can see that if I do this. Can you see me how close I am here? So this is basically what I'm doing. I'm right around this position here. Let's go back to looking through the camera. So I'm gonna find that flare on there again. There we go. Let me hold the light in position right about there. And then I'm going to stop it down just the tiniest bit. Boom. Look at that. There's stopping it down just the tiniest bit. So at least on this particular lens, that tiniest, tiniest little bit of stopping it down really changes the character of it, which I, I guess I kind of saw when I was using this one, but nowhere near as much. Now it's like, ooh, you're really catching that. So you're definitely, you're getting more of the lens. You're getting more of the advantage of the inherent, what this lens is supposed to do or not supposed to do just because it happens to be old and crunchy and weird, but you're getting that lovely life out of it. So let me show you some photos that I did. This is actually a commercial job. I did this for a client and uh, I shot a bunch of stuff with this lens. And some of these are color graded, some of them are not, but most of these are probably wide open. So here we've got the sun coming from behind me, uh, but look at the nice, nice bokeh that we're getting on this thing. Um, this, I love this. This is even, even this is like really nice and sharp. Let's do a quick zoom in on here. Um, Let's go to the original view. Let's see, there, there's the original showing the, there's the original shot. And then the way that I graded it is, uh, there's the original, sorry. There's original, there's the graded version. Um, really some nice character to it. Really nice shallow depth of field on there. And you can see it falling off very quickly off of here. Uh, zoom back out of that. And when it's close up tight, it is very sharp, especially in the center. It definitely gets a little softer on the edges. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, well, for the type of character that we wanted in here. 
And yeah, overall there, look at this nice, nice shell. So I'm obviously quite a bit of distance from him. We got some nice shell up the field there. The background's out, this, this wood here is out. It's pretty cool. It's, a, it's nice, I really like it. And then let me get to these close up hand shots that I was doing here. Here, I was deliberately trying to get some of the flare. So check out the nice flare we're getting here. We've got light coming through the uh, sanding machine here and maybe poking through under him, probably around his back there. We're getting some of this flare and I just, I love, absolutely love the characteristics of that. So really digging that. Really digging it. And then here, again, some other stuff. Um, these are quite, probably not quite as interesting from the lens perspective. Nice high contrast, you know, really good contrast in the lens. Oh, these are cool too. So this close up trying to capture this blowing off the dust on this thing. This is a local industrial shop that I was shooting for a magazine. Um, yeah, there you go. Some nice sharpness in there. That's cool. Here you can start to see some of the swirliness coming in as well. It's pretty slick. I, I just, I like it. I like the lens a lot. And it's one of those where obviously it's fully mechanical, fully manual. You definitely get a, a unique look to it. Um, the colors of it are different than what I'm getting off my other camera, off my other lenses, the Lumix lenses. So I shot some with the Lumix, some lenses, some with this. So I was kind of mixing and matching the colors and kind of pulling them in to make a match as much as possible. But it gave me that unique look and I, I really enjoyed it. So, um, you know, you tell me guys, what do you think? Do you, do you have any vintage Russian lenses and not have one of these adapters? If not, then grab this. It'll totally bring new life into your lenses. And uh, I think overall it's pretty fun. Now, I don't know, I'm sure these adapt to other manufacturers as well. We'll see when you click on the link down below. Sorry, I don't know offhand. It's, you know, obviously I'm just looking at it from the Micro Four Thirds perspective, but, uh, but yeah, check it out. See what you can do. And if you've got any pictures you've shot with this kind of combination, link to them down below or stick a link to a Flickr gallery or whatever you got. And, uh, and we'll check that out. So that, my friends, is that, hey, before we go over to the Q&A, let's do one of these things real quick. Uh, a couple things. I'm going to remind you of the trip to India. Not that you don't already know about it. You know about it. But we're going to India. Photojoseph.com slash India for this workshop slash photography tour. It's going to be unbelievable and amazing. GH5training.com. If you are a GH5 owner and you don't yet have the GH5training.com, remember, you've spent a whole bunch of money on your camera. Spend a little bit of money learning how to use it properly, you won't regret it. I have not had a single complaint about the video, which is kind of nice, frankly. Everybody seems to love it. I got really, really good reviews on it. So um, yeah, please, please do that. And uh, finally, um, I know I do have the card up here. So we did the, we did the interview with Caleb Pike a week ago. It was a week ago today, wasn't it? It was a week ago today. And that video, as promised, went up on the, uh, so do I have it? I do have it here. Went up on the uh, YouTube for 48 hours for free and that 40 hours is now gone there is now a trailer to that we'll link to that up here and that trailer is a five minute kind of hack up of the interview so you can get a taste of what it is and the main interview is now over at photojoseph.com behind the membership page so if you are interested in that interview plus the many more that are going to be coming i've already got three other people that i've been talking about who are talking with who want to do the interview and that's just the first three we're going to keep doing these i'm going to do at least one a month but i'm probably going to do more than that more than that especially in the beginning just to kind of get a bunch of them in there but those interviews will as always uh, be free live and then I will put them up on YouTube for a very limited time for those who couldn't watch live, and then it will go behind the paywall at photojoseph.com. So photojoseph.com, hit the membership button, you'll learn all about that. photojoseph.com slash business will take you to the interview page, which right now is just the one of Caleb, but eventually will obviously be more. And yeah, and that's that. Okay, cool. Hey, let's go over to the Q&A, shall we? If you've got questions, if you're watching live, you've got questions, get them into the chat room. Make sure you put at photojoseph in front of them, and uh, let's see what we can do.